Today we will study the Hadith class. We will start from the book Sunan Nisai. Hadith number 3225. Read this Hadith. Miss Amina. Aisha or Muhammad it was narrated from Aisha that Abu Hudayfa bin Utbah bin Rabia bin Abdishams, who was one of those who had been present at Bad with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adopted Salim and married him to his brother's daughter, Hind bint Al Walid bin Utba bin Rabia bin Abd Shams and he was freed he was a free freed slave of an Ansari woman as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had adopted Zaid during the Jahiliya. If a man adopted someone, the people will call him his son and he will inherit from his legacy until Allah the mighty and sublime revealed about that call them by the names of their mm. fathers. That is more, more just with Allah. But if you know not their fathers, names call them your brothers in faith and ma and mawalikum, your freed self. Then if a, fa a person's father's name was known, he will be their freed slave and brother in Sahib. <clears throat> What is your name? My name is Mirikh Muhammad Mahfoud. So you repeat? Mirikh Muhammad Mahfoud. Okay, Mirikh. In old time before Islam, let's suppose you adopt a child. His name may be Umar. You adopt a child whose name is Umar. Before Islam, when anyone used to adopt, what is the name of your husband? My husband is Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. So let's suppose you both have adopted a child named Umar before Islam. In old time, <clears throat> Adopted child was considered as full child. So Umar will get the name of your husband as his real father. And also he will get inheritance from you and Abdul Muttalib, just like your other children. This was before Islam. But when Islam came, Islam removed this thing. So Islamically, this thing is finished. Now, Umar will be called by the name of his real father or real father and mother. So you can adopt a, adopt a child, no problem, nothing wrong with it. But legally, he will be called by the name of his real parents. And also, he will not get any inheritance from you and your husband because he is not your real child. <coughs> Only real child will get your inheritance. And in case you don't have any real child, then you can give something to Umar. But once you die, your inheritance will be given to those with whom you have some real relation like blood relation so refresh this page so here we will write will 
adopted child get inheritance from adopters adopters or does <clears throat> does adopted child get inheritance from adopters So in the answer you will write according to Hadith three two to five. He will, he or she will not get any inheritance from the adopters. Okay, he or she will not get any inheritance from the adopters. And then you can also write, but adopters can gift him some of their property or wealth while they are alive. So the other part of the answer is, but the adopters can gift the child some of some of not all some of their property or wealth while they are alive <clears throat> next student uh, 210 to 1 aisha Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Repeat the question and the answer. Will a dog child get inheritance from adopters? Uh, Hadith to three two two five. Uh, he or she will not get inheritance from the adopters, but adopters can give some of. The child be a property or wealth. I'll read the next one. It was narrated from Aisha, the, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, and Um Salma, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, that Abu Muzaffa bin. Utba bin Rabi bin Abdul Shams, who was one of those who had been present at border with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam adopted Salim, who was the freed slave of an Ansari woman, as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had adopted. Zaid bin Hari, Haris, Haris Abu Abin Haris Zaid bin Haris Abu Zafa bin Utwa married Salim to his brother's daughter and by bin Hind bin Ikali Kawa Hind Hind bin Al Walid bin Ali Walid. Abu Rabi bin 
next student muhammad it was narrated from from ibn buraida that his father said the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the nobility of the people of this world that which they always go to is well what is nobility in the eyes of the people what is the nobility in the eyes of the people in the answer you write according to the hadith 3227 wealth is the nobility in the eyes of people wealth is the nobility in the eyes of people what does it mean wealth is nobility in the eyes of people o oh, muhammad yes or no do you know the answer no i don't know the answer So, nobility in the wealth is nobility in the eyes of people. It means that if you, if anyone has wealth, he will be considered as a noble person in the eyes of people. And if he does not has wealth, he will not be considered as noble. Rather, he will be considered as a useless person. Let's take a practical example from our world, which you will see soon. Uh, remind me the name of your son ahmad ahmad let's suppose ahmad is very good person in terms of religion he is very good but his salary his income is too low so religiously he is one of the best boy or best man in your city in terms of religion but in terms of wealth he has one of the lowest income he is very poor boy it is very difficult for him to live 
financially when you will go to ask a girl's hand for marriage with him you will see that most of the parents will decline that why they will decline that because in their eyes wealth is nobility and since ahmad does not has any wealth so they will consider ahmad as a useless person okay but there is another person do you have any other son ya yeah, abdullah abdullah is your second son so yeah. let's suppose abdullah got spoiled spoiled by the society so now he drinks alcohol he go to the dance clubs he is a dj your other son became dj a famous dj and he has very good income now when you will go to ask the hand for a girl's hand for marriage with abdullah you will see parents will happily accept it although his religion is not very good but most of the parents you will notice that they will accept his proposal only because of the wealth why because according to this and this wealth is nobility in the eyes of people okay now explain me why wealth is uh, what is the meaning of the statement wealth is nobility in the eyes of people it's like when you have when you have wealth people value you but if you don't have wealth you are useless yes they will forget about your religion Miss Aisha. For what should a woman be married? Three two two eight. It was narrated from Jabir that he married a woman at the time of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam met him and said, "Have you got married, O Jabir?" He said yes. He said a virgin or a previously married woman. I said a previously married woman. He said why not a virgin who would play with you? I said oh messenger of Allah, I have sisters and I did not want her to come between them and I. And I, he said, that's better than a woman may be married for her religious religious commit commitment, her wealth or her beauty. Ah, uh, you should choose the one who is religious religiously committed. May your hands be rubbed. With dust, may you cross. Okay, we have uh, two things here. First thing, what type of woman shall A person choose as his 
Why? Option one. Beautiful. Option two. Rich lady. lady. And option three. Religious lady or ladies lady, okay. So, Mr. Muhammad, you started looking a girl for your son Ahmad, and you found three girls. First girl is very beautiful, but she is not a religious and she is neither rich, she is a poor girl. Second girl is very rich, but she is not beautiful and she is not religious. And the third girl you found is very religious, but she is not beautiful at all and she is not rich at all. So which girl will you choose for your son? I will choose the religious one. Correct. So here you will write the answer according to the hadith three two to eight. We should choose a religious girl as our wife. We should choose a religious girl as our wife. Now here we have a dua from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this dua is for those. Who choose a religious girl? What is dua? Your hands be rubbed with dust. Can you tell me why Prophet ﷺ gave this dua to a person who choose a religious person or who choose a religious girl as his wife? Yes or no? No. No. Okay. In old times, <clears throat> there was most of the work called manual works in which they used to do everything with their hands. And most of the people had the profession of farming, farming in the fields. And work was manual as well. If you work in the fields, your hands get dirty. When your hands get dirty, you don't like that thing. Nobody want, like his hands getting dirty. But after some time, when he gets the fruits and vegetables or you can just say crop is simple word. When he gets the crops, they become happy. So in old time, it became a dua. May your hands get soiled. May your hand get soiled. At that time, it became a dua, that which means you will prosper in long term. So same thing is in marriage. Every man wants a beautiful girl. This is their nature. But when they choose a religious girl who is not beautiful, in beginning, they don't like, they don't enjoy it very much. Everyone enjoy a beautiful girl. A well-figured girl more than a simple girl who is not very beautiful but religious. So in, initially they don't enjoy very much. But when, after some times, when she treats him nicely, when she gives him respect, she listens to him. And children are also religious. He has peace of mind. Then he becomes happy. So that is the reason why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used, used that dua for a person who chooses a religious girl instead of 
beautiful girls. Now explain me why Prophet ﷺ used this dua for a person who selects a religious girl instead of beautiful girl. Can you explain yes or no? Yes. Okay, try to explain. Answer. Why Prophet ﷺ used this dua? May your hands be soiled. Mr. Muhammad, can you explain yes or no? I wanted to ask. Yes. If um because me I I was adopted by my my other mom, so yeah. when when and she died, so when I make dua. Should I, uh, will it go to my real mom or my adopted mom? You can, it is up to you. If you want dua for your real parents, it will go to your real parents. If you want, if you make dua for your uh, foster mother, it will go to the foster mother. It is up to you, your choice. Okay. Or you can make dua for both of them. Nothing wrong in it as well. Oh, okay. And the explanation about the religious woman, there was someone here making noise. I couldn't hear. Can you repeat a little bit, like one minute? Okay. So in old times, most of the works were manual works. They were not very many machines. And most of the people had the profession of farming in the fields. They used to sow seeds to get crops, fruits, vegetables. When you work in the fields, your hands get dirty. When you work hard in the field, your hands get dirty. And nobody likes getting his hand dirty. But after some time, when he harvests the crops, when he gets fruits and vegetables, that person becomes happy. So in old time, this phrase, may your hands get soiled, may your hands get rubbed with soil, was used as a dua, that you are working hard, inshallah, later, you will get the fruit of your hard work. You will become happy. So it was used as dua in old time. Similar thing happens in the marriage as well. Every man wants a beautiful girl. But when any man <clears throat> chooses a religious girl instead of a beautiful girl, initially he does not enjoy her very much because it is the nature of every man. They want a beautiful girl. Initially, they don't enjoy it very much. But after some time, when she respects him, she treats him nicely, and the children are also religious, he gets peace of mind. Then he becomes happy. That is the reason why Prophet ﷺ used this dua for the man who chooses a religious girl instead of a beautiful girl. Initially, that man does not like very much, but in the time, he gets peace of mind. So that is the question here. Why Prophet ﷺ used this dua, may your hands get soiled. Tarabat yadaka. Why Prophet ﷺ used this dua for such a man? Did you understand? 
Uh, yes, I understood now. Can you explain me? As you say, the uh, people used to do farming to get vegetables. So to do farming, you have to, the hands has to be dirty. You have to plow and all that. After that, then after some times, you the 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 farmer harvest fruits. Then the people become happy when they have the fruit. So it's like when someone is is not uh, uh, beautiful, mm. you don't enjoy the God. But when he has the dean, when he respects you and take care of your kids and show them the right way because she is religious, that's when the, the, the husband will have peace of mind. And he will get so religious lady is like farming as well. Mm. So that is the reason why Prophet gave this dua to such a person. Okay. If anybody has any question, they can ask me. Then we will stop. So next time our class will start 15 minutes earlier. 15 minutes before this time because this is change in time is because of the Maghrib Salah here. Yeah. So from next time, our class will start 15 minutes earlier, inshallah. And also, uh, on Sunday, I will be absent. This Sunday, I will be absent, okay? I need to go somewhere. Next Sunday? Yes, this uh, Sunday. Tomorrow is Saturday. Then we have Sunday. On Sunday, I will be probably absent. If I am okay. available, I will message before the time, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. See inshallah. you all next time, inshallah. Masalam. Inshallah. Masalam.